Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the bony orbit and its associated fissures and foramen. So what is bony orbit? So there are two bony orbit and bony orbits are cone shaped structure and they lies just immediately below the anterior aspect of cranial cavity. What does it mean that when you will see the skull, in this skull, this is your anterior part of the cranial cavity. When you will open this cap of the skull, what you are able to understand that this anterior most area is known as anterior cranial fossa. Now just below this anterior cranial fossa, you are having two cone shape structures which are known as bony orbit. Now this cone is having the apex and the base and when you will see the apex, apex is directed posteromedially. That means the apex is posteriorly but the apex is facing towards the medial side, not on the lateral side or not in the midline. This apex is having the posteromedial relation with this base of the orbit. It is having a wide base and this wide base is placed on the face. So this margin which is known as orbital margin is the base of that cone. So when you will see this diagram, in this diagram you are able to appreciate that this is your anterior cranial fossa. Now in this anterior cranial fossa, this is the area if you will remove this part of the bone you will enter into the orbit. So orbit lies just below the anterior cranial fossa. Now here you can see that in this diagram if you will draw the cone you are able to understand that this cone is having the base this brace is on the face and this is the apex and this apex is directed posteriorly but towards the midline so it is known as posteromedial position of apex of the orbit. Now what are the different bones contribute in the formation of the bony orbit? So there are seven bones maxilla, zygomatic, frontal, ethmoid, lacrimal, sphenoid and palatine bone. Now in this diagram you can appreciate all these bones. Now this is what you are able to see. This is the frontal bone. Then you will have the other bones like this is your maxilla, this is your zygomatic bone, this is your sphenoid bone, then you will have the ethmoid bone, this is your lacrimal bone. Here you have very small contribution of the palatine bone. So when you will see this list of the bone and if you have the question that which bone gives minimum contribution in the bony orbit, the answer is palatine bone. Now this palatine bone is here which is having a minimum contribution in the formation of the bony orbit. Then the bony orbit is pyramidal shape which we just talked about and it is having the wide base. This wide base is having open oh, opening on anterior aspect on the face and this opening is closed by the eyelid. When you will have the apex, apex extends posteromedially which is again the important thing which you have to understand. The pyramid configuration is in such a way that it is having the medial wall, lateral wall, superior wall and inferior wall. The apex of the pyramid is having a for optic foramen. So that we will discuss in the coming part of the slide that what is optic foramen. So in this diagram you can appreciate that deep to this apex you can see that there is a foramen this is known as optic foramen. So what are the different parts? of the orbital rim. Now when you will see this base or the base is also known as orbital rim, it is having superior border, medial part, inferior and lateral. Now here you can see that this is the superior most part of the rim and this part of the rim is formed by the frontal bone. Now when you will come on the medial side, on the medial aspect, you will have this bone this is your maxilla and this part is going to make a suture with the frontal bone. That's why this part is known as frontal process of maxilla. When you will have the inferior component, on the inferior part you will have the two bones. This is the maxilla and this is your zygomatic bone. Now this zygomatic bone is making a suture with the maxilla. 
that's why this part is known as zygomatic process of the maxilla and the maxillary process of zygomatic bone so inferiorly you will have the maxilla on the medial side and you have zygomatic bone on the lateral side on medially you will have the maxilla which is having the frontal process on the superior side you will have frontal bone now when you will come on the lateral border now this lateral border is also mainly formed by this part of the zygomatic bone now this part of zygomatic bone is going to make a suture with the frontal bone and this process is known as frontal process of zygomatic bone and it is completed from above by the small projection from frontal bone so in nutshell when you will see all the borders of the orbital rim now what are the bones which you are having in this orbital rim so from above this is the frontal bone then on the, on the medial side you will have the maxilla on the inferior part you have the maxilla with the zygomatic bone and on the lateral side you have zygomatic bone and frontal bone so these are the bones which are forming the outer border or the rim of your orbit now in this diagram you can see that this is actually known as rim or the base of the orbit here we just discussed the bones this is the frontal bone now this frontal bone is making not only the superior part of the rim but is also contributing on the medial side but and also on the lateral side now this is your zygomatic bone this zygomatic bone is forming the major portion of the lateral part of the rim and it is also contributing in the floor and this is the maxilla which is contributing in the floor as well as on the medial part of the orbital rim now what about the witness tubercle now witness tubercle is a very important question for your viva and it is a feature of your lateral side of orbital rim now this is a small elevation on the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone just behind and within the orbital margin on lateral side now it is present just below the fronto zygomatic suture now in this diagram first you have to find out where is the fronto zygomatic suture so this is the frontal bone this is the zygomatic bone and in between them you will have this suture is known as fronto zygomatic suture now just below the fronto zygomatic suture on the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone there is a small elevation and this is small elevation is known as witness tubercle so witness tubercle is present on the inner side of your zygomatic bone on the lateral part of orbit now where is what is the importance of this witness tubercle now this witness tubercle give attachment to the ligaments which are supporting to the eyeball so it is giving the attachment to the check ligament of the lateral rectus muscle it will give attachment to the lockwood or the suspensory ligament of the eyeball it will give attachment to the lateral palpebral ligament and it also give attachment to the part of levator palpebri superioris aponeurosis then the next comes is what is superciliary arches now the superciliary arches are just superior to the rim of the orbit on each side of the uh, raised part is known as superciliary arch so when you will see the front of your skull on the medial side this portion which is raised actually and this part is known as superciliary arch now these are the most pronounced or i should say they are more prominent in the males as compared to the females and between this you have a flat portion now this flat portion between the superciliary arch are known as this portion is known as glabella then in the medial part of the su uh, superior rim you have a one important feature is known as supraorbital foramen or notch now where is the supraorbital foramen or notch now this supraorbital as the name suggesting it is present along the superior border of the orbit that's why we are using word supra and it is here now this is the supraorbital sometimes become a foramen 
or if it is open then it is known as notch and you know that through this area you have the supraorbital nerve and vessels which are going to supply this part of the forehead. Then you have the one more important thing that what are the structure from the roof of bony orbit. Now as we have already seen in the initial part of the class that the roof is actually a partition between the anterior cranial fossa and the bony orbit and it is mainly formed by the frontal bone. So when you will see the roof which is also known as the superior wall of the orbit is made up of the orbital plate or orbital part of the frontal bone and there is a very small contribution from the posterior side by the sphenoid bone. Now this thin plate of the bone separates the anterior cranial fossa from the orbit and there is a superior orbital fissure is present. It is present between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the lesser wing of the sphenoid that form the part of your roof. Now in this diagram you can see that this area is considered as a roof. Now in this roof you are having the major contribution of the frontal bone and posteriorly you can see that this small contribution comes from the lesser wing of sphenoid bone. Now in this diagram you can appreciate that this is your floor of anterior cranial fossa and we are saying that this floor of anterior cranial fossa is forming the roof of the orbit. Now in this floor you can see that major portion is formed by this orbital plate of the frontal bone and posteriorly you will have the contribution from the lesser wing of sphenoid bone. Now there is an important thing that below this lesser wing of sphenoid there is a gap present and that gap is known as superior orbital fissure. Now this superior orbital fissure is not a space between two bone. It is not a space between two bones. It is a space between the two parts of a single bone. The difference is what I am, I am saying that it is a space between two parts of a single bone. And what is that single bone? That single bone is known as a sphenoid bone. And what are the two parts? You have the lesser wing and you have the greater wing. So you have to understand that superior orbital fissure is a gap between the two parts of a sphenoid bone. It is not a gap between two bones. Now, when you will see the roof, there are some unique features which are present in the orbit. First is known as trochlear notch or the trochlear fovea and second is the lacrimal fossa. Now, when you will remove the roof, that is the floor of anterior cranial fossa, when you will cut this bony plate and when you are seeing from the above, that means you are seeing the roof, you are able to appreciate the two important features. One is known as trochlear fo uh, fovea and second is you have a depression here on the uh, lateral aspect of the roof and that is known as lacrimal fossa. Now this trochlear fovea is having a pulley and this pulley is important because with the help of this pulley you have a muscle is known as superior oblique which is an extraocular muscle and this superior oblique will change the direction and it is possible just because of this trochlea which is attached on the trochlear fovea and this is a feature on the medial aspect of your roof in anterior side. So it is an entromedial feature when you will have the lateral side of your uh, roof you again have a depression is known as lacrimal fossa which contains the orbital part of your lacrimal gland. Now posteriorly the lesser wing of sphenoid completes the roof that we have seen that posterior part if you will complete this area you are actually completing the lesser wing of sphenoid. And I just told you that the superior orbital fissure is a gap between the greater and lesser wing of the sphenoid. So if I am cutting this actually I am here you can see that you can appreciate the gap and this gap is nothing but it is a part of superior orbital fissure. Now we come to the medial wall of the orbit. 
now when you will see the medial wall now this is the nasal cavity so this will become the medial wall now in this medial wall you are having the bones starting from this this is the maxilla then behind the maxilla here you can see this white color bone this white color bone is the lacrimal bone now behind the lacrimal bone this green color is your ethmoid bone and behind this you have the contribution of this yellow color bone is the sphenoid bone so when you are having the medial wall from anterior to posterior side what are the bones answer is maxilla then you will have the lacrimal bone then you will have ethmoid bone and then you will have this small portion of your sphenoid bone the largest contribution in the medial wall is orbital plate of ethmoid bone now this portion is actually the ethmoid bone and this is very papery thin area and that's why this plate is known as lamina papyracea or it is also known as orbital plate of ethmoid bone now this part of ethmoid bone contains the ethmoidal cells what does it means that if you will puncture the medial wall of the orbit through this orbital plate of ethmoid bone you will enter inside the ethmoidal air sinuses now the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina are the features of the medial wall it is present at the junction of fronto ethmoidal suture now where is the fronto ethmoidal suture so this is the frontal bone this is the ethmoidal bone and this line is known as fronto ethmoidal suture on this line here you can appreciate that there are two foramens one is anterior and another is posterior ethmoidal foramina so anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina are the feature of the medial wall of the orbit which are present at the junction of the frontal and ethmoidal bone the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina allow the passage of anterior posterior ethmoidal nerves and vessels which leaves the orbit through these opening apart from that on the medial wall here you have a groove and this groove is known as lacrimal groove so one is the lacrimal fossa the fossa is present here that is on the entro lateral aspect of the roof here now we are discussing the lacrimal groove now this lacrimal groove contains the lacrimal sac that sac is a part of lacrimal apparatus and it is bounded posteriorly by the lacrimal crest which is a part of lacrimal bone and anteriorly it is bounded by the crest of maxilla so this elevation is the crest of maxilla and this elevation is the crest of lacrimal bone and in between these two crests you have a depression is known as lacrimal groove which contains the sac now we will come to the floor of the bony orbit now this floor of the bony orbit is known as inferior wall and it is also known as roof of maxillary sinus because this area which is your maxilla is containing the maxillary sinus and this sinus is going to open inside your nasal cavity now this sinus is separated from the orbit by this part of the bony plate and that's why it is saying that this bony plate is it is floor of the orbit or roof of maxillary sinus now it consists of mainly the maxilla which is orbital surface of the maxilla and a small contribution is from the zygomatic bone and palatine bone now if you will see here where is the contribution of the palatine bone now this is the very small contribution of the palatine bone so i initially told you that if you are having the question that which is the following bone having minimum contribution in the formation of bony orbit answer is the palatine bone but more specifically palatine bone contribute in which part of the orbit roof floor medial wall lateral wall then you should always keep in mind that this palatine bone is a part of the floor of the bony orbit and the major contribution in the floor comes from this purple color area that is your orbital part of the maxilla which is a partition between the maxillary sinus and orbit there is a small contribution also comes from this part of the zygomatic bone and the least or the smallest component of palatine bone the lateral boundary of the floor 
of the bony orbit is the inferior orbital fissure. So, here you can see this is the inferior orbital fissure. Now, this inferior orbital fissure is a gap between the two bone. I told you that superior orbital fissure is not a gap between the two bone, but it is a gap between the two parts of a bone. That means it is a gap between the lesser and greater wing of the sphenoid. While inferior orbital fissure, this inferior orbital fissure is a gap between the two bone. That means the maxilla and greater wing of sphenoid. So this is the important thing and this inferior orbital fissure is the lateral boundary of your floor of orbit. Then the lateral wall. Now this is the lateral wall. Now in this lateral wall, you are anteriorly having the zygomatic bone and you have posteriorly the greater wing of a sphenoid. And this greater wing, the lower border is a point or the boundary between the floor and the lateral wall. So this lower border of the greater wing is the junction between the floor of orbit and lateral wall of the orbit. Then you will have the fissures and foramina of the orbit. Now there are numerous structures enter and leave the orbit through the various openings. So what we are going to discuss is the optic canal, superior and inferior orbital fissure, infraorbital foramen and anterior posterior ethmoidal foramina. So first is the optic canal. As I already told you that optic canal is a feature at the apex of the orbit and it is present in this pyramidal shape apex of the orbit. It opens into the middle cranial fossa and it is bounded medially by the body of sphenoid and laterally by the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Now here you can see that this area is actually the area of your optic canal. Now in this area of the optic canal, you are able to understand that it is a communication of middle cranial fossa with the orbit, not anterior cranial fossa. This is the important question for your exam. Second thing is what are the boundaries? So it is bounded one side by the lesser wing and another side by the body of a sphenoid. So what structure pass through the optic canal? There are two structures. Those are passing through the optic canal. One is the optic now, which is taking the sensation from the your eye. That is the sense of the vision. And second thing is ophthalmic artery, which is taking blood to the or uh, your eyeball. Then in this diagram, you can appreciate this more clearly. Now this area, this is the point and this point is known as optic canal. Now here you can see that this, if you will complete this posterior border of the lesser wing, this is the middle cranial fossa. So this is the middle cranial fossa from where you can see that optic nerve is having entry inside this orbit. So the important thing is that Optic canal is a communication of orbit with the middle cranial fossa, not with the anterior cranial fossa. And what are the structures you have? You have the two structure. One is the optic now and second is your ophthalmic artery. Now what is superior orbital fissure? Initially I to already told you that superior orbital fissure is a gap between the greater and lesser wing of the sphenoid bone only and it lies just lateral to the optic canal and it is a triangular shaped gap between the roof and lateral wall of the bony orbit. So this is your superior orbital fissure. Now this is the lateral wall, this is the roof and it is a gap between the roof and lateral wall. This allows structures to pass between the orbit and middle cranial fossa. So again it is a communication with the middle fossa. The structure which are passing through the superior orbital superior orbital fissures are the cranial nerves which are going to supply the structures in the orbit. So it is having the ophthalmic now superior inferior branches then you will have trochlear now you have abducent now and you have the branches of ophthalmic division of trigeminal that is frontal lacrimal and nasociliary now. Apart from that there is a superior ophthalmic vein. So this list is very important for your exam, write down the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure. Now when you will see this image of the sphenoid bone, here you have to understand 
that this is your posterior border of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. And I am saying this again and again that the superior orbital fissure is a space between the two part of the sphenoid. So, here you can see that this is the superior orbital fissure. So, this is your greater wing, this is your lesser wing and this gap is the superior orbital fissure. So, this greater wing becomes the part of the middle cranial fossa and the structures those are present into the uh, cra cranial cavity, the nerves those are coming from the brain stem, they are uh, coursing through this part of the middle cranial fossa and then they pass through the superior orbital fissure and appears in the orbit. So, this is the important thing which you should realize that it is a gap between the lesser and greater wing. Apart from that here you can see that this is your position of optic canal and through this position of optic canal again the orbit communicate with the middle cranial fossa. Now here you can see it is again this is the uh, cut part of margins of the lesser wing. Once you will cut the lesser wing you can see the entry of the now into the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Now this superior orbital fissure is divided into the three part by attachment of a ring of zin. So here you can see that this ring of zin attached here. Now it will attach in such a way that the contents which are present or passing through the superior orbital fissure divided into the three part the contents in the lateral part of the superior orbital fissure contents in the medial most part of the superior orbital fissure and contents passing through the middle portion of this superior orbital fissure as well as through the ring of zin so when you will see the lateral contents the lateral contents are lft L stand for lacrimal nerve, F stand for the frontal nerve and T stand for the trochlear nerve. So you will have lacrimal, frontal and trochlear nerve and you will have the structure which are passing through the middle portion. In this middle portion you are having the nerves. What are the name of the nerves? You are having the superior division and inferior division of the third cranial nerve. Apart from that you will have the sixth cranial nerve and you have nasociliary branch of your ophthalmic division. So, what is the importance of the superior orbital fissure? That superior orbital fissure is a very important passage for the cranial nerves to enter inside the orbit. Then you have the inferior orbital fissure. This inferior orbital fissure is a partition or I should say the separation between the lateral wall of the orbit and the floor of the orbit. So, this is your lateral wall, this is the floor and in between them you have this inferior orbital fissure. Now this inferior orbital fissure is a, uh, its border are the greater wing of the sphenoid and the maxilla palatine and zygomatic bone. So here on the medial side this is our uh, major portion comes from the maxilla plus anteriorly this is the zygomatic and a small contribution from the posterior side is palatine bone. Now this is the very important uh, communication of the inferior orbital fissure which you, you should understand. Now here you can see that this is your inferior orbital fissure. You are able to see the base of his skull from the uh, posterior side. Now when you are seeing the view from the posterior side you can see that this upper part, this part, this yellow bone is your sphenoid bone. So this is the sphenoid bone greater wing and you have this maxilla. Now this is the maxilla which is forming the major contribution. Now in between you will have this uh, inferior orbital fissure. Now through this inferior orbital fissure the orbit is communicating with the temporal and infratemporal fossa. So this is the major contribution from the structures in the infratemporal fossa which enters into the orbit. So whenever you are having the connection bit, uh, with the orbit and infratemporal fossa the gateway is known as inferior orbital fissure and also you will have the pterygo palatine fossa which is most medial part and you have the communication with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. So when you have the inferior orbital fissure communication there are three areas those are communicating first I told you the most medial communication with the pterygo palatine fossa most lateral communication with the temporal fossa 
and in between you have the communication with the infratemporal fossa. Then what are the structures passes through the inferior orbital fissure? So first is the zygomatic branch of the maxillary nerve. Then you will have inf infraorbital nerve and vessels, orbital branch of the pterygopalatine ganglia and there is a communicating vein between the inferior op ophthalmic vein and pterygoid venous plexus. So you have to understand that superior orbital fissure is a communication between the orbit and the middle cranial fossa while the inferior orbital fissure is a communication of the orbit and extracranial space. Now what are the extracranial space? I told you the extracranial space are pterygopalatine fossa, infratemporal fossa and temporal fossa. So this concept is should be always in mind that what are the extracranial communication of the orbit and intracranial communication of orbit. So you have the next is the infraorbital foramen. Now you know that infraorbital foramen is the opening on this face and through that the infraorbital nerves come out and it will supply this area along with the artery. Now this foramen begins initially as a groove. So posterior most area is having a groove and this groove is known as infraorbital groove. This groove continue anteriorly across the floor of orbit. So when you will see the posterior part, in the posterior part you have a groove and this groove is the infraorbital groove. Now later on this groove convert into a canal and this canal is later on known as orbital canal. This orbital canal ultimately continuous till the anterior end and anterior end of this canal is known as infraorbital foramen. So through this foramen the infraorbital nerve comes out and infraorbital nerve is a branch of maxillary nerve and this is sensory for this part of your face. So you have to realize that infraorbital foramen is not a complete canal posteriorly it is a groove in the middle portion it convert into the canal which continues as a foramen on the face. Then we have the ethmoidal foramen. I told you that in ethmoidal foramens are the feature of the medial wall. You have the junction of the frontal bone and ethmoid bone and at the junction you have the one pair of the foramen anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina. So these openings provide exit from the orbit into the anterior cranial fossa for the anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerves and vessels. Now dear students, the question is that it is a communication of orbit with anterior cranial fossa. Whatever the structures you are reading, for example, if somebody will ask you, this optic canal is a communication of orbit with, answer is middle cranial fossa. This superior orbital fissure is a communication of orbit, orbit with, answer is middle cranial fossa. The inferior orbital fissure is a communication of orbit with, answer is extracranial spaces like pterygopalatine fossa, infratemporal fossa and temporal fossa. But these two foramens, anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramens is a communication of orbit with, answer is anterior cranial fossa. So this is the important thing which you have to keep in mind. Then you have sometimes the fractures of the orbit. That is known as orbital fractures. Orbital fractures are always a part of complex facial fractures. And once the orbital fractures will take place, there may be a fracture of maxilla, frontal and zygomatic bone. The fractures within the orbit frequently occurs within the, most commonly they involve the floor and the medial wall. But if you will see, there are large number of the bones, so inferior or vital floor fractures are one of the commonest type of injury. So which bone is most commonly damaged, answer is the maxilla because the inferior orbital uh, fractures, that means the fractures of the floor are more common. Medial wall fractures, if occur, characteristically show air within the orbit in x-ray. Why? Because we have told, we have discussed here that this orbital part of the ethmoid bone is a papery thin part and that's why it is known as lamina papyracea. So, and it is 
having the deeply placed your ethmoidal air cells. So once this plate will get damaged, you are able to appreciate the air inside the orbit. This is due to the fracture of the ethmoidal labyrinth permitting the direct continuation between the orbit and the ethmoidal paranasal sinus. So at the end of this class of the bony orbit, now we are able to understand what are the bones contributing in the formation of the bony orbit. And the other and most important thing is what is the meaning of the communication of the orbit with anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa or extracranial spaces. So this is all for today's class. Thank you.